Having sewn for nearly 20 years, I have picked up a few tips and tricks and hacks along the way that I thought I would share with you today to help level up your own sewing. So here are five quick and simple hacks that actually work. Before I continue, I just wanna say a massive thank you to my sewing subscription box customers for making this video possible. So it can be super easy to get really caught up when you're searching on Pinterest or Google for sewing tips and you see these images that say 80 sewing hacks. A lot of them don't quite hold up, but I have got five that I use all the time in my own sewing. So let's start with number one. It's pretty simple. It's how to thread a sewing needle. So if you've got a hand sewing needle and thread and you're trying to push the thread through the eye of the needle, it's going to get caught up. It's not gonna go through properly. It's going to get quite frustrating. This is a hack that I actually picked up from my GCSE textiles teacher that has stayed with me for over 20 years now. What you need to do is draw the end of the thread down through your thumb and forefinger until you can just see the very end of the thread. Take the needle and place the eye of the needle on top of that tiny little tip that you can just see and just gently rock the needle backwards and forwards as you're pushing the needle down in between your thumb and forefinger and you will get the thread straight through the eye of that needle pretty much every single time, I guarantee it. Tip number two is pressing curves on things like a curved patch pocket. If you try to just do this with an iron and no guide at all, you're gonna get lots of sharp edges. You're not gonna get a nice smooth curve, but this is how I do it every single time. First of all, once you have cut out your paper pattern piece for the pocket, you are going to trace it onto some thin card like a cereal box. Then you need to draw a second line, reducing the size of your cardboard template by whatever the seam allowance is suggested in the pattern instructions. Draw a second line, cut that out and you've got your template. You're going to place that on top of your fabric and using chalk or a water erasable or heat erasable marker, just draw around the curved sections. And then you're gonna snip from the edge of the fabric just up to that line, don't go over it. And that's gonna help the fabric ease into place. Put your cardboard template back onto the pocket and you're going to press the raw edges of the fabric around the template. And that again is gonna help get the curve as smooth as possible. Those notches that we cut are gonna start overlapping and you can just very gently ease them around each other. Take your cardboard template out and then my extra little tip for you is a temporary fabric glue. This stuff is amazing. I use it on labels to just hold them in place whilst I sew them, buttons, facings, things like that, just to hold them in place before I go around to sewing them. So just open up those raw edges again and put some glue inside and you're just gonna press it down and that is gonna hold it in place whilst you take it over to your main fabric and top stitch the pocket in place and you will get a beautifully smooth curve. Next up is how to shorten a zip. So if your pattern calls for a shorter zip than you have in your stash, there's no need to go out to the shop and buy something new. These are really easy to shorten. These are the plastic zips that we use in dressmaking. For metal zips, for bags, there's a slightly different method. But for these plastic ones, all you need to do is measure from the top of the stopper down however long you want your zip to be. So this zip is currently an eight inch zip. Zips are measured from the top stopper to the bottom stopper, not the length of the tape itself, just the zip teeth. Measure from the top of the stopper down to however long you want your zip to be. In this case, I'm doing six inches and pop a little pin in there. Take some needle and thread, double the thread over and you just need to do five to 10 stitches around the zip teeth, 
knot it into place and then take some scissors, not your fabric scissors, and just snip a couple of inches below and you've got a shorter zip. Hey presto, super simple, super easy. Tip number four is using an elastic band or washi tape to mark the seam allowance on your sewing machine. Some older sewing machines perhaps don't show all the different seam allowances, maybe they're hard to see, perhaps you need to do a seam allowance that's much wider than what is shown on your sewing machine. So in order to ensure a nice straight seam, just place some, an elastic band over the bed of your machine or take some washi tape and you need to measure from where the needle is going to go in out to where you need your new seam allowance to be and place the washi tape or the elastic band in place making sure that it runs parallel to your presser foot to make sure that you have a beautifully straight seam. And finally tip number five is how to stop your machine swallowing your fabric. Now this is something that happens all the time could I get it to actually happen for the purposes of this video? No, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> but I know you have been there. I've been there plenty of times. The needle either pushes the fabric down or the bobbin gets a bit caught up and your machine essentially swallows up your fabric. It's really annoying. You end up with this unsightly bobble of thread underneath and it just doesn't look great at all. So in order to stop this from happening, it's really, really simple. Draw your top and your bobbin thread out a little bit and make sure it is placed to the back of your sewing machine. Pop your fabric into the machine underneath your presser foot and put the presser foot down. As you start stitching, grab hold of the threads and just really gently pull them as you're sewing, just the first couple of centimeters and then you're good to go, you're away. The fabric has gone smoothly through the sewing machine and you have a beautiful seam. So there you have it. Those are my five super quick, super simple sewing hacks that actually work. Let me know in the comments if you have any other hacks and maybe I will try them out and make another video in the future. And if you haven't ever heard of these hacks before, let me know if you're gonna give them a go. Thank you so much everyone for watching. Have a fabulous day and I will see you all soon. Bye.